Hello boys and girls! This week we're going to be learning about the layers of the ocean for our oceans topic. Now, I wonder if you actually knew that oceans have layers, a bit like a cake. There's lots of different layers all stacked on top of each other, so it's actually really, really interesting to find out about and I hope you enjoy learning about the layers this week. So, what are we learning this week? Well, we're learning to discuss the characteristics of the layers of the ocean. And characteristics really just means we're learning to discuss what you would find in these different layers of the oceans. What species would you find? What's the temperature like? What's the light level like? So really just identifying some of the features. How will we learn this? Well, we've got this PowerPoint. I'm also going to include some links to some videos. You're going to be doing your own research. If you like, you can do a flip grid. You can do a comprehension task, an art task, or create your own PowerPoint. But these are all just optional. You can choose to do one, or you can choose to do all of them. It's entirely up to you. Why are we learning about this? Why do we want to know about the layers of the ocean? Well, we want to be successful learners who are motivated to learn more about the oceans and deepen our understanding. We also want to be successful learners who continue to use technology for our learning. And boys and girls, I'm going to film a separate video all about PowerPoint because it's a really, really good opportunity during lockdown to be exploring those digital skills. We also want to be responsible citizens who are developing our understanding of the world and our place in it. So we want to know that the ocean isn't just one big layer. We want to find out more about it and find out more about how our actions might affect that. How will we know if we've been successful? Well, we'll be able to answer the comprehension questions correctly. We'll be able to clearly identify the different ocean layers and some of the characteristics. And you could do that through your art, through your PowerPoint, however you would like. You can include topic specific vocabulary. So you want to use some of the keywords you're going to be learning today. And you also want to include representations of these different layers. And again, that's up to you how you want to show them. So the blue planet. Earth is referred to the blue as to the blue planet because it looks blue from afar. There's actually a really famous photo that um, one of the astronauts took from up in the space station looking down on Earth and it just looks like a blue dot because it's covered in water. So the Earth looks blue because, as we know, 70% of its surface is covered by water and we know the five oceans. So, boys and girls, we already have a lot of prior knowledge about this subject and we're really taking this week to deepen our understanding. Now, going on to some new learning. Sunlight shines on the oceans just like on the land. However, life does, light sorry, does not reach the deepest layers of the ocean. So you can see here that you've got the sun and these rows almost represent the different layers of the ocean. And the top layers are of course going to get the most sun, but as you go down deeper and deeper and deeper into the ocean, it's harder for these areas to get sunlight. They're going to be darker areas, colder areas, because the light does not reach these deepest layers. So what exactly are these layers? I wonder if you actually realise that oceans do have layers. Each layer has its own specific characteristics. Now, we've got the sunlight zone, and that is the top zone, because that's the zone that's getting the most sunlight. That's the easiest one, really, to remember. And this is found from 0 metres, 200 metres down. OK, so it's the top layer of the ocean. Then as you get further down, as you go towards 200 metres depth and then down to 1,000 metres depth is the twilight zone. After that, we've got the midnight zone because it's getting darker like at midnight. And that's from 1,000 metres down to 4,000 metres depth. After that, you've got the lower midnight zone from 4,000 metres depth to 6,000 metres depth. OK, so it's even lower than the midnight zone. And after that, you've got the trenches, which is lower than 6,000 metres. And I know some people have spoke about the Mariana Trench. Um, I've seen that in your research. So that is one of the trench areas, one of the deepest parts of the air. So let's look, first of all, at the sunlight zone. So the sunlight zone is also known, and I hope I pronounce this correctly, as the epipelagic zone. 
and it's where most ocean organisms live because it receives the most sunlight. Okay, so you would expect that, boys and girls, where there's the most light, you're going to find the most species. And the temperature here is still quite warm. It's 12 to 20 degrees Celsius because it's getting the sun. And you can see here, we've got some species. You've got some plants in the ocean. You've got some jellyfish. And you've got a kind of snorkeler. This is the area that they tend to, to explore. So a scuba diver can reach a depth of 40 to 50 metres. So if you went scuba diving on your holidays, which you would be so lucky to do, you could go scuba diving in the sunlight zone, but you would only really get about a quarter of the way through it. You couldn't even explore the whole depth because it is still very large. You get plants like seaweed, phytoplankton, and flowering plants that live here, as long as they can get sunlight to perform photosynthesis. So they have to use the light to perform photosynthesis, and you can't do that process without sunlight. Most types of fish and animals, including dolphins, turtles, rays, seals, coral, and jellyfish, live in this zone. So all the kind of species that we know about really live in this sunlight zone. And the pressure here is one atmosphere, which is the same as one kilogram of weight on your fingernail. Okay, so as you go down deeper, the pressure starts to get um, stronger. Okay, so this is a sunlight zone, the first zone. Right, going down deeper now into the twilight zone, and it says 200 metres to 100 metres, but that should really say 1,000 metres. The temperature here is getting colder. It's 4 to 13 degrees Celsius. And this layer is also known as the mesopelagic zone. And again, I hope I've said that correctly. And it's the Greek for the middle zone. And very little sunlight is reaching this zone. You can kind of see in this picture, you can see some sunlight coming down, but definitely not as much as the sunlight zone. So animals such as whales, shrimps, swordfish, hatchetfish, and octopuses live in this zone. There's no plants here because there's not enough sunlight to perform photosynthesis. And you also get sponges living at these depths. So people often think that these are plants, but they're actually sessile, which means non-moving animals. The pressure here is 29 to 88 atmospheres, which is the same as 29 kilograms or 88 kilograms of weight on your fingernail. So the pressure is getting much stronger here. Going down from the twilight zone into the midnight zone, okay? So we know it's midnight, there's not much sun in this zone. The temperature here is 4 degrees Celsius, so it's getting cold. This layer is also known as the bathypelagic zone which is the Greek for deep, and there is no sunlight that reaches this layer. You can see that 2,438 metres is the operating depth of an oil rig. Okay, so that's how far an oil rig can um, really use its machinery at. And the Titanic was found in this zone. It was found at a depth of 3,800 metres. In this zone, you'll find animals such as larger whales. You'll find squids echinoids and blobfish as well and I know someone had sent on a blobfish as one of their fat fell animals and they do look very very strange so if you've not already looked up a blobfish I would do that now because they're very strange looking animals. The only light in this layer is produced by bioluminescent animals such as the anglerfish and if you remember in our video from last week I included a, photo, um, a video of some bioluminescent um, animals as well so these are the types of animals that live in the midnight zone, okay, they're producing their own light. The pressure here is very strong. It's 100 to 393 atmospheres, which is the same as 100 to 393 kilograms of weight on your fingernail. So, so strong. So, the next layer underneath the midnight zone is the lower midnight zone. This is from 4,000 to 6,000 metres depth. The temperature here is cold. It's only zero degrees Celsius. This layer is also known as the abyssopelagic zone, which is the Greek for very deep or bottomless. And conditions in this zone are extremely dark and very cold. There's no sunlight in this zone whatsoever. This zone, surprisingly, is the largest environment on Earth. There is no bigger environment. 
The deepest point of the Arctic Ocean is 5,450 metres below sea level, so that is within this lower midnight zone. And the organisms that live here are sea spiders, basket stars, medusas and sea pigs. So, boys and girls, I would love if someone researched these different animals and sent me in some pictures of these because these species sound very, very interesting. The pressure here is 400 to 590 atmospheres, which is the same as a 400 kilogram or 590 kilogram weight on your fingernails. So the pressure here is very, very strong. Finally, we've got the trenches, lower than 6,000 metres, incredibly deep. This layer is also known as the Hadopelagic Zone, and it's named after the Greek underworld Hades. It is pitch black and temperatures are very cold. The Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench is the deepest place on Earth, the deepest ever, and it was first explored by Jacques Picard and Don Walsh. Most animals living in this zone, they cannot see, they don't need to be able to see because it's so dark, so there's no point in them having evolved eyesight because they wouldn't be able to see anyway without light, so they need to rely on other senses. Some fish live in this zone, such as a rat tail fish and a leparid fish, and amphipods wait for scarce food to drop down, and decapods, which eat amphipods, also live in this layer. So, you get something called marine litter and it's little wee bits of um, food or animals that have passed away and eventually say a shark comes along to eat a whale. Bits of the whale break off and they'll get smaller and smaller and they'll eventually fall all the way down as little wee microscopic bits of food and the animals which live at the bottom of the ocean will eat that food. They'll filter it in and eat it. And the pressure here is 600 to 1000 atmospheres, so incredibly strong. So, the Mariana Trench is the deepest place on Earth. It is 11,000 metres deep. Wow. And there's a documentary as well, and I'm going to include that link for you too, boys and girls, so you can have a look at that as well. There's lots of research you can be doing this week to further your knowledge in whatever areas that you're interested in. So, going on now to our task suggestions. How are we going to be learning about this this week? Well, the first task that you could choose to do, and I think this is the one that I would choose to do because it just looks so much fun, is to use an old shoe box, an old cardboard box, and show us these different layers of the ocean. Now, the first example is obviously not the layers of the ocean, it's the layers of the rainforest, but I just included it because it was a very good example. You can see that someone's taken different cardboard boxes and stacked them on top of each other. And they've used kitchen roll or toilet roll um, tubes to kind of show the trees. And they've then added on some of the species you would find in the rainforest and some of the foliage as well. Now, you could obviously do something very, very similar with the oceans, boys and girls. You could have cardboard boxes stacked on top of each other. You could be using recycled materials in your house or any leftover art supplies. Please don't go out and buy anything for this, but you can use things you've already got in your house to create a really, really good visual representation of the layers. You could label the different layers. You could include some of the pictures of the animals, maybe try and make it 3D. I know a lot of people like to do that. So it's really a chance to build up your art skills and be creative. You can see this other picture. This is someone who's done the layers of the ocean and they've really used a line to kind of demonstrate these different layers and to label them. And I think what they've done is they've used old straws or old cocktail sticks to write the different layers on and stick them in. So that looks quite fun as well. And here's another one again using cardboard boxes. And this person has printed off pictures and coloured them in to show the different layers and labelled them too. So you can really take this as far as you want, boys and girls, and get as creative as you want. Your second task suggestion, and I'm going to be filming a second video for a topic specifically about this one, and it's about making a PowerPoint about this. Now, some people have made PowerPoints for their tasks. I know that Jessica um, Devlin, she's made a great PowerPoint um, for one of her tasks a couple of weeks ago, and I've seen quite a few. 
And I thought it'd be really worthwhile exploring how to use PowerPoint um, during this lockdown time. So I've got a whole other video on that that you can watch if you would rather show this in a PowerPoint form. Up to you again, whatever you would like to do. You might want to completely go for an art project. You might want to paint the layers of the ocean. You might want to explore mixing different blues, so using white and black with the blue to really show the different light levels in the different layers of the ocean. And then you might want to colour in pictures and cut them out and stick them on top. Entirely up to you. Or you can see here is another poster where they have used different colours of paper to show the different light levels of their layers, stuck them together and then labelled them and cut out some of the different pictures. So again, just giving you some inspiration, boys and girls. So that's us for today. I hope you find this interesting. I'm really, really excited to see what you come up with this week. Um, it's really a chance for you to get stuck into a project, boys and girls, and get creative and really develop skills in a new area, all the while learning about the layers of the ocean. So I hope you enjoy it this week. Let me know if you've got any questions. I'm going to link quite a few different videos in the assignment you can watch throughout the week. Don't feel like you have to watch them all, but if you want to watch them, that, that would be great as well. So thanks for listening, boys and girls. I'll see you soon. Bye.